I'm going to read from um, Lunch Bucket Paradise, my new book, published by Heyday. Uh, it is 19, let's say, 58, and we're across the bay in one of the new blue-collar suburbs that have sprouted up right after the war. Now pay attention to me. Dad towered above, hands on his hips, sunlight filtering through a crosshatch of sycamore branches, his smooth pink scalp illuminated and glistening with sweat. He wore grease pot tan chinos, savaged at the knees from planting radishes and carrots all morning in the backyard. His canvas hunting jacket was fastened together at the unspooling seams with a foot-long patch of silver duct tape. You just can't cut their heads off. I shifted my weight, working the flat of one palm into the wet grass, adjusting my gaze so that Dad's shoulders obscured the sun. Several score of yellow dandelions lay scattered across the lawn where I neatly severed them mid-stem. Why not? Because they grow right back, that's why. These weeds ain't no Marie Antoinette and King Louis, you know. He hitched up his trousers by the belt loops and grimaced estimating my acquaintance with the events of, 18, of 1789, <laughs> and then plowed ahead just the same. You can't go decapitating these fellows like some crazed Jacobin. Dad was in a fine mood this Saturday morning. The cool spring air sharpened with the scent of bay salt and arsenic swept in from the landfill at the edge of town. He'd been up since dawn, relishing several hours of complete dominion over the yard. In his hunting jacket's inside pocket, he kept a small notebook and pencil stub, ticking off the chores and projects as they fell one by one. Crazed Jacobin. Almost certainly this was a compliment. <laughs> Here, try this. Dad flung a nine-inch screwdriver into the lawn. It thronged. I would have heard all about it if I'd been the one playing with tools. Dig him out, every one of them, by the roots. He stalked off and I rolled back on all fours retracing the zigzag of luminous yellow petals beginning to wither and curl in the glare of mid-morning. Basically, he was saying, start over. I stabbed the screwdriver into the lawn, imagining it to be the fat belly of Superman's arch enemy, Lex Luthor. <laughs> Only this morning in bed, sheets pulled up to my neck. I had started reading the latest issue of Jimmy Olsen comics, a three-part exploit in which Superman's pal is mysteriously transformed into a human porcupine. <laughs> My father did not object to comic books, but he argued that greater satisfactions could be obtained by making a necessary contribution to the household. I plunged the screwdriver into the, head of a headless, into the heart of a headless dandelion, which squirmed under the pressure. Its stem mashed and slivered, but the root wouldn't budge. I leaned into the tool, and we sank another inch, Working from the wrist, twisting and flicking, I upended the weed at, at its tip, and it flipped out of the ground and into the air like a little man in a flowery hat shot from a cannon. Its crisp tail had broken off. It made me think of a carrot chomped a third of the way down, like Bugs Bunny would have done on Saturday morning cartoons. I was hungry. I wanted to go inside, get out of the sun, eat frosted flakes, watch TV, Maybe spend some time later with Jimmy Olsen, cub reporter for the Daily Planet, a great American newspaper in the city of Metropolis. A blast of water rattled the pipes along the side of the house. Almost immediately, my nostrils throbbed, registering the tang of iron. My throat burned. Dad out back, spraying the roses. I sank the screwdriver, handled deep into the lawn, and hurried into the backyard to watch him work. Dad was leaning against the compost bin cradling a, br a brown plastic bottle like the head of a snake slinking out from a dirty coil of sun-baked hose. When he fingered the release valve, the fine, acrid mist of ortho home, home, sprays, home orchard spray doused a platoon of aphids tramping across our butter-yellow roses, and I gagged. Insecticides, said Dad, had won the war, along with plastics and light metal alloys and radar and jet engines and a thousand other inventions and improvements. Yet my father did not apply ortho to our front lawn, where it might have done some good against the dandelions. Mom disapproved. Dad could do whatever he wanted in his backyard, but the front yard was public property. 
at least in the way it got used every day by us kids slithering through the grass, grinding ourselves into the dirt, soaking up through the open, our open pores the lurking vestiges of modern science's most recent realignment of the ordinary molecule, the polychlorinated hydrocarbons and biphenyls that made our life out in the patio pleasingly free from gnats, that caused California's Central Valley to blossom into the best spread fruit and vegetable table the world has ever known, that gave the citizens of suburbia the green, gushing pleasure of backyard horticulture, the companionship of flowers, fruits, grasses, shrubs, and trees all year long. You done in front already? I shrugged, sniffing the air. The scent of ortho was both repellent and delectable, like the rot of your own athlete's foot. I, I guess so. Why do you have to guess? I'm not finished yet, I explained more judiciously. Not nearly, but I want to help you massacre the snails. <laughs> Dad pe peeled back his lips to expose a faultless set of alabaster false teeth. The army had yanked all the originals, saving him a fortune in dental bills for the rest of his life. Okay, go get the baguetta. It's under my workbench. When I returned with the green and orange cardboard box featuring a menacing gargantuan snail on front, we sprinkled its contents across a patch of beets, onions, and spinach. Dad, can this stuff hurt people? We both studied the russet carpet of petrochemicals. You an aphid? No. A snail? No. A slug? No. Well then. But you wouldn't want to eat it, I asked innocently enough, would you? As soon as we stopped talking, I'd have to return to the dandelions. Dad cocked his head. Look, he said, his voice rising in faint exasperation. I know what your mother thinks, but there's people in India and China and whatnot now that they've got enough to eat two and even three times a day, thanks to baguetta and what have you. There's even this scientist, and this fellow's got himself a PhD from the university, a doctor of plants or animals or insects, maybe. And every morning during his coffee break, along with his Nescafe, he treats himself to a nice little meal of bug poison with a funny name. I believe they call it 2,4-D. And what, and what do you think it's done to him? Nothing. Not a damn thing. Said he's even got to enjoy the taste. <laughs> Dad grinned bumptiously at the audacity of learned men, at progress itself. And then he suddenly tightened his lips, and his expression straightened like a clothesline. Now, don't you go snacking on this stuff yourself. It's for snails only. At least, he said, clapping me on one shoulder, you wait until you get a laboratory of your own. I laughed along as though I thought I might actually grow up one day to be a scientist or a farmer or even the guy at the nursery who sold us the box of baguetta. It seemed a perfect moment. So I asked him, can I have a dog? <laughs>